Good to have you with us. This is Arirang News, live from Seoul. I'm Na Hyun Gyeong. The story is making headlines at this hour. Prime Minister nominee Lee Won Gu starts his two-day confirmation hearing. All eyes are on how he will handle a series of allegations against him, including his attempts to control the media. Now, Korea's finance minister says reforming the structure of the economy is more critical for revitalizing the Korean economy than revising interest rates. And U.S. President Barack Obama says Washington will wait for how the talks in Minsk turn out on Wednesday before making any decisions about supporting Ukraine. But first, we begin with, at the National Assembly, where the Prime Minister nominee Lee Wan Gu is undergoing his confirmation hearing is taking place. And our presidential or the National Assembly correspondent Park Ji Won has the latest on what is going on at the National Assembly. The two-day confirmation hearing for Prime Minister nominee Lee Wan Gu got underway at the National Assembly on Tuesday. Lee, the ruling Senate Party floor leader up until late last month, began by expressing his regret over a series of allegations against him that have piled up in recent weeks. As I was preparing for this confirmation hearing, I was once again reminded of how small and problematic I was. I bitterly regret my deficiencies. The 65-year-old three-term lawmaker is facing a tough road ahead as the main opposition New Politics Alliance for Democracy Party has urged him to withdraw himself from consideration. That's a turnaround from when the nomination was announced as it was hailed at first by both parties. The amicable atmosphere changed amid allegations surrounding his past. These range from accusations of real estate speculation to doubts about whether he and his son properly fulfilled their mandatory military service and a public outcry against his attempts to wield his influence over reporters, behavior that he has since acknowledged as improper. The hearing ends Wednesday and lawmakers will vote on his nomination on Thursday. Park ji Arirang News. Meanwhile, President Park Geun-hye met with the ruling party leadership at her office earlier today where she sought party support for a passage of bills related to her economic revitalization, revitalization plan. Party leader Kim Mu-sung said he will work closely with his opposition counterpart Moon Jae-in to get the bills approved. Meeting the president for the first time since his election, new floor leader Yoo Seung-min echoed President Park's view that any discussions at the parliament on issues concerning public welfare should focus solely on the interests of the public. Now, Tuesday's meeting comes a day after President Park flat out rejected suggestions from the party leadership to consider raising taxes to cover expanding welfare programs. And there are still many eyes on the actions of the newly elected opposition party chairman Moon Jae-in. Recent polls show his ratings have gone up since his election, but some critics say his new style is not genuine and is just a ploy to win more votes. Our Kwon Soa reports. A latest public opinion poll shows the main opposition party's newly elected chairman Moon Jae-in is becoming more popular in the public's eyes. According to Real Meter's latest survey, more than 22 percent of respondents see Moon as a potential presidential candidate in 2017. That's almost 10 percentage points higher than current Seoul mayor Park Won-soon. In a separate survey, the New Politics Alliance for Democracy's new leader had more popular support than UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon, who has been used as a potential candidate since last year. The pollster says Monday's unprecedented visit to the graves of former right-wing presidents Lee Seung-man and Park Jong-hee by the left-wing leader was viewed in a positive light by around 60 percent of ruling party and main opposition party supporters. But Moon has received criticism for not persuading the new Supreme Council members to do the same. Analysts say Moon has adapted his political views since his defeat to President Park Geun-hye in the 2012 presidential election, saying his decision to pay respects to the former authoritarian leaders reflected his will to bring about national unity as well as strong national security. 
Moon said that when it comes to those matters, it is not about which party is right or wrong. But others have expressed skepticism, saying they need to see he truly believes in what he is saying and doing. Critics evaluate Moon's change in actions as a mere tactic to garner more supporters, especially as his party is riddled with deep-rooted factionalism. Kwon Soa, Arirang News. Russia says Kim Jong-un's planned visit to Moscow in May will not affect relations between Russia and China. The young leader is expected to travel to Russia for an event marking the 70th anniversary of the Soviet Union's victory over Nazi Germany in World War II. Russian ambassador to China Andrei Denisov told a Russian media outlet that Kim's attendance was natural and logical as Korea also fought for liberation against Japan in World War II. Now, this was in response to seeming concerns that Beijing would be unhappy about Kim's visit as North Korean leaders traditionally travel to China before they visit other, other countries. Denisov stressed that Moscow and Beijing share the same stance on resuming the stalled six-part talks aimed at denuclearizing North Korea. Officials and researchers from Korea and the U.S. will gather in Washington next Tuesday to mark the first anniversary of the U.N. Commission of in Inquiry's landmark report on North Korea's human rights record. They are expected to discuss Pyongyang's human rights violations and its future. Now, the list of participating participating institutions from Korea and the U.S. includes the Center for Strategic and International Studies and Yonsei University. The conference is being held at a time when North Korea is demanding its human rights record be expunged following a defector's recent confession that parts of his story about his life in a prison camp were falsified. U.S. President Barack Obama has made it clear that he is holding out hope for a diplomatic solution to the conflict between Russia and Ukraine. He says he will wait for the outcome of an upcoming round of four-way talks set to take place in Belarus on Wednesday. Kim Yeonbin reports. U.S. President Barack Obama says there has been no decision yet on whether to send arms to Ukraine. He said he will wait for the outcome of Wednesday's talks in Belarus between the leaders of Ukraine, Russia, France and Germany before deciding on whether to send lethal arms to Kiev to help the Ukrainians fight pro-Russian separatists in the east of their country. Wrapping a talks with German Chancellor Angela Merkel at the White House on Monday, Obama stressed that diplomacy and sanctions remain the top priority for resolving the crisis. If, in fact, diplomacy fails, what I've asked my team to do is to look at all options. What other means can we put in place uh, to change Mr. Putin's calculus. Uh, and the possibility of lethal defensive weapons is one of those options that's being examined. But I have not made a decision about that yet. Obama made clear that he could put more pressure on Ukraine by providing arms. However, that could endanger Washington's unity with Europe on the issue. The German leader who is opposed to sending weapons to Ukraine urged Obama to think very carefully about his next move. We continue to pursue a diplomatic solution, although we have suffered a lot of setbacks. These days we will see whether all sides are ready and willing to come to a negotiated settlement. The decision on supplying arms to Kiev has been postponed temporarily as Merkel and French President Francois Hollande are working to find a diplomatic solution. The two are due to meet with Russian President Vladimir Putin and Ukrainian President Petro Poroshenko in Belarus on Wednesday and what some experts say could be the last realistic attempt to resolve the crisis diplomatically. Kim Hyun-bin, Arirat News. And despite white differences, the anti-austerity Greek prime minister said he was confident that a compromise could be reached on his country's bailout program with his European creditors. Greek Prime Minister Alexis Tsipras made this statement from Vienna where he held talks with the Austrian Chancellor who said the goal must be to keep Athens in the Eurozone. An emergency meeting of Eurozone finance ministers will be held tomorrow where Greek officials will present a proposal. According to a source cited by the New York Times, the detailed compromise will keep about 70 percent of the current bailout terms. In the year 2012, where Korea was added to record All of the day's important events, events close to home and around the world. 
join Na Hyung Kyung live from Seoul. Shopping market thinks the true meaning of creation shines through. Korea's tax revenue fell short of its planned target for the third straight year in 2014 as the country grappled with a prolonged economic slowdown. Now, this was also the largest on record. Our Hwang Ji-hae has the details. Korea's tax revenue fell short of the government's target by a record amount last year. This also marks three straight years of a shortfall. The finance ministry says tax revenue came in at around 205 trillion won, or roughly 190 billion U.S. dollars, in 2014, around 10 billion shy of the goal. Last year's shortfall is even larger than the amount recorded at the height of the Asian financial crisis in 1998 of 7.8 billion. The ministry attributes the shortfall to sluggish corporate tax revenue stem from companies' weak performances. Corporate taxes for 2014 reached around $39 billion, $3 billion less than the government's target. It also says slumping domestic demand and a strengthening Korean won against the greenback prompted a fall in value-added taxes and customs duties. The government managed, however, to collect more taxes on wages than its target by $450 million. The ministry explained that the rise in the number of employed resulted in more income tax revenue. For 2015, the ministry is targeting tax revenue that's up around 2 percent from last year's target. It adds that it will push through structural reforms and economy revitalization plans this year to meet the goal, but experts are skeptical about that as the economy at home and abroad remains sluggish. Hwang Jie, Arirang News. Finance Minister Choi kyung hwan met with his global counterparts at the G20 Finance Minister's meeting in Istanbul. Ahead of the event, he told a foreign media outlet that Korea needs to focus more on reforming its economic structure than on revising interest rates. For this report, here's our Shin se -min. Korea's finance minister Choi kyung hwan says the country's interest rate policy will be locked in for some time as the domestic economy is showing a steady recovery and inflation will remain balanced. Speaking with Reuters ahead of the two-day G20 finance minister's meeting in Istanbul, the finance minister said economic reform is more important for the Korean economy than an interest rate adjustment. The major issue that we should solve for economy is reforming its structure rather than cutting or raising interest rates. He said the Korean government has identified labor, education and the financial and public sectors as the major areas for reforms so that the nation can avoid falling into a drawn-out period of sluggish growth. The finance minister also pointed out the nation's key interest rate is already at a historic low of 2 percent, unchanged for a third straight month. This year's challenge would be risky as the global economy may not be recovering faster than we expected. Low oil prices are absolutely good news for the Korean economy, but it also has various risk factors at the same time. That would be another challenge that we could face this year. On the global economic front, Chess said the European Central Bank's recent monetary policy could benefit the export reliant Korean economy as it could drive demand there for exports from Asian countries. Shin Se-min, Arirang News. Korea's IT and communications sector enjoyed another strong month in January, with exports jumping 6 percent from the same month last year on the back of solid memory chip orders. Korea's trade ministry says the country's ICT exports amounted to 14 billion U.S. dollars in January. Now, while the key sector managed to keep its trade balance in the black, imports rose at a faster rate of 14 percent on-year last month. Handset exports continued to fall amid intensified competition from Apple and Chinese manufacturers. Handset imports, on the other hand, soared more than 55 percent, mostly on rising demand of Apple's new iPhone 6 models. 
Chinese tourists are visiting Korea in ever larger numbers, especially during the holiday season. The Korea Tourism Organization projects some 126,000 Chinese tourists will visit the country during the week-long Chinese Spring Festival that starts next Wednesday. Now, this would be a 30 percent increase compared to last year. For the whole of last year, more than 6 million Chinese tourists visited Korea, making up well over 40 percent of the total number of foreign visitors. Now, the culture ministry says it's preparing to release more leaflets and storybooks about Korea in the Chinese language, as well as some shopping promotion guidebooks. With the demanding academic and working schedules of many, many Koreans, getting a decent night's sleep can often be difficult. What we do know is that Koreans are sleeping less and worse, and for some, it's getting to the point where they require special treatment. Our Kim ji has this next story. Hunched shoulders, dark circles under droopy eyelids, excessive yawning. These are telltale signs of sleep deprivation, a common condition among Koreans. The national sleep average is less than eight hours, the lowest among OECD member countries. So what's keeping them up at night? I sleep for three to four hours a day during the academic semester. I feel dizzy all day, so I try to get fresh air from time to time and try to sleep while commuting. These days, I sleep like five hours because of night culture in, in Korea. My company has a lot of meetings and conferences, and after that, we go drinking. And so it's really hard to go sleep. If aroma candles and counting sheep don't work, what can one do to get a good night's rest? Specialized medical centers have popped up in recent years to help, like this clinic in downtown Seoul. Quality shot eye is important for the brain, says the clinic's doctor. While we're sleeping, the brain helps the body dump out waste, making way for a fresh start the following morning. Sleep deprivation is truly detrimental to the body. The immune system will start to fail, inducing all sorts of diseases, including arrhythmia, diabetes, and stroke. It's important to ask for help and receive treatment, particularly for those suffering from insomnia for more than three months. Physical and psychological methods are often used to help insomnia patients. Those suffering from sleep apnea may get help from a surgical procedure. For others, a five- to eight-week program to change cognitive and behavioral patterns could be the ticket to reclaiming those precious sleep hours. Kim Jeong, Anirang News. Now, we often talk about which cities are the most expensive, cleanest, and safest, and so on, but which is the world's most sustainable city? According to a new ranking, it's Frankfurt, but the positive news for Korea is that Seoul has been ranked the most sustainable city in Asia. Now, globally, Seoul ranks seventh ahead of Hong Kong and Singapore. The Sustainable Cities Index by design consultancy firm Arcades ranks 50 leading world cities and a great them on their environmental progress, viability as a place to live, and their financial stability. Frankfurt was recognized for its green areas and numerous parks and rivers. European cities lead the way on sustainability. Now, there are now fewer than three years remaining until the 2018 Winter Olympics kick off in Korea's resort town of Pyeongchang. With the clock ticking, the question is how much of the prep work has been completed and what still needs to be done? Our Connie Lee has this report. For those of you counting down, the Pyeongchang Winter Olympics is just about three years away. Come February 9, 2018, the high-profile competition will kick off in Gangwon, the province, with top athletes aiming for gold. While it still seems a long way off, in actuality, the clock is ticking for Korea, as it must complete all preparations one year before the Games open. With budget and environmental issues looming, the question is whether Korea will be ready in time. So far, only around 10 percent of work has been done on the six new facilities being built for the Olympics. And the funds received from sponsors to bankroll construction only make up 15 percent of the goal of about 730 million U.S. dollars needed. 
Meanwhile, the citizens of Gangwon-do are up in arms about money being wasted, especially the combined 219 million U.S. dollars being used on the speed skating rink and an ice hockey rink, which will be dismantled after the 17-day event. As for facilities that are set to be used afterwards, like the 12,000-seater figure skating rink, with no concrete plans for how the venue will be put to use, local residents aren't exactly excited about adding another rink to the five they already have. Pyeongchang officials say Korea will be ready in time, but hopes linger that more practical plans will be implemented soon enough. Connie Lee, Arirang News. Now, as it is for any part of the world, Asia has had its history of disagreements, but there has also been peace. Now, one art exhibition in Seoul takes a look at Asia through the lens of visual art. Our Im Yuni joins us today to tell us more. Good afternoon, Yuni. Good afternoon. That's absolutely right. So, uh, so Art Sonje Center, which is where the exhibition is being held, they have opened a joint exhibition, part of which takes four different nations and creates a united approach to art for these visionaries. Take a look at this next report. Sometimes you have to look outside of the box, and you'll find art where you're least expecting it. The Art Sanje Center is one of Korea's leaders in current and experimental contemporary art. Their most recent experiment includes the rather unconventional. Here, smoking is not a pastime, but is instead part of the art. This piece by world-recognized artist Hee Man Chung takes the art experience to a whole new level. Like reading a story changes your idea of reality and in the way by smoking inside the museum, it changes your relationship with the museum. Also at the Art Sanje Center on joint display is Discordant Harmony. The exhibition is in collaboration with the Gote Institute and brings together 12 artists from four different countries, Korea, China, Taiwan and Japan. These global artists aim to look at the relationships between countries in Asia, examined through art. Contemporary art can be difficult mm -hmm. for many people to digest and, and understand. So I hear uh, they yeah. also offer some explanations for regular visitors, such right. as myself. Right. So they are holding a series of different talks uh, for those who want to try to navigate through these works. Now, these talks are being held by the curators, um, other specialists, along with the artists, of course, who are there to uh, sort of explain some of their works, maybe to us uh, people who are a little bit coming from the outside uh, with these. But they said they want to address all these different types of issues, cultural issues, social issues, philosophical issues, lots to talk about, lots to think about, and you know, lots to learn. Mm -hmm. And the second, the name of the second exhibition is very interesting. It's Discordant Harmony. Right, right. So the curators actually have defined this as the idea of a uh, Asia that appears to be united on the front, but actually has quite a few cultural differences, you know, and that actually, it's a very good thing, but at the same time with that comes a lot of differences, a lot of disagreements, mm -hmm. and so they want to create, the, they want to create a, with this exhibition a roadmap so that people, the artists can show, sort of show uh, the, the patterns and the relationships of Asia through the past couple of years and what it looks like through the eyes of an artist. So some very interesting works that you're going to have to use your imagination for very and interpret it. Yeah, right. So, uh, so an interesting exhibition to check out. Right. I'm very impressed by the smoking or the cigarette butts uh, it's left It's a new one, there. right? <laughs> right, it's very new. It's, it's going to take days for me to understand that one. All right, thank you very much, Yuni, for bringing us this story today. You're very welcome. Hello everyone, I'm Michelle Park here with the latest weather forecast. The cold spell has broken today, putting the numbers back to normal. Now you have noticed the difference this morning because the temperature was approximately 10 degrees higher than yesterday morning. 
Now the afternoon is expected to be milder all across the nation with the highs in some regions down south ranging into the teens so it looks like a warmer Tuesday is ahead. Now above the peninsula it's looking pretty clear though here in the central region it's going to be a bit gloomy because of the clouds and smog and also there is a high levels of chances of high levels of fine dust across the country so make sure to stay updated if you have any plans on going outside. Now also we've had a dry weather alert in place since yesterday and it would have been nice to see that lifted as well but unfortunately it has expanded so watch out for any fire starters. Now let's take a look at the readings for today. So it will peak up to 6 this afternoon. Meanwhile, the southern cities such as Gwangju and Busan will reach higher at 9 and 10 degrees. And moving over to other regions, Jeju Island gets up to 9 as well. Tokyo hits to 6 while Mount Gungang is light clouded at negative 4 degrees. That's all for now. I'm Michelle Park and I hope you have a wonderful day and back to you, Yang Yang. Thank you very much, Michelle. That brings us to the end of our newscast. I'm Nahyun Gyeong in Seoul. More updates coming up at 4 p.m. Korea time.